KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Tunnel Program. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime limited powertrain warranty. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Now on primetime, the governor has declared that Guam will go back to PCOR 1, effective 12.01 a.m. early Sunday. The island will be in PCOR 1 for two weeks, more from today's media conference. Plus, with the announcement of PCOR 1, the island's public, private, and Catholic schools make the necessary adjustments. And with the island moving into PCOR 1, what does that mean for the primary election? Half a day and good evening. I'm Tomas Manglonya. The governor has ordered Guam back into PCOR 1 effective midnight Sunday. She made the announcement in a much anticipated news conference today, saying the order will remain in effect for at least two weeks. All non essential businesses will not be permitted to operate. All public gatherings will be prohibited. All public and private schools will remain uh, closed for in person instruction and public parks and beaches will be closed except for individual use like exercises. It's deja vu all over again. Businesses in particular were hoping the governor would opt for PCOR 2, but she completely bypassed that and ordered the island back to the most restrictive pandemic condition, where once again, only essential businesses will be allowed to operate. She says it wasn't an easy decision, but she believes the latest data supports it, as the infection positivity rate has recently more than doubled from 1.2 to 2.9. There were 121 positive cases in just half of the month of August. 121. I don't know how, I don't know where those positive cases are going to end up, but I'll bet you some of them will end up in the hospital. And it's the capacity or ability to accommodate hospitalizations is what's troubling her. I am very worried. I've been communicating with the Admiral and he is prepared, if we need to, to stand up the hospital tent and to bring back medical uh, professionals that will help us. This is how drastic this thing is. The governor mentioned there might be as many as 47 new cases, but those figures had not been reported yet as of the new time press conference. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, for anyone who's second guessing the governor's decision, Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio says, just look at the numbers. These cases that we received in August with half the month not complete is nearly 25% of the total cases since March. So I would think it's very obvious to everybody and quite frankly for the majority of the people of Guam that swift and uh, fast action needs to occur uh, and we've made that decision to do that. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lecanto. And the Archdiocese of Ganya Director of Communications Tony Diaz says the Liturgical Commission is meeting and will announce plans for church services and operations late tonight. And the Defense Department held a press briefing at the Pentagon today with the Director of Department of Defense Schools, Thomas Brady. He was asked by a reporter about increased risks of student infections, but his response was cut off by Chief Pentagon Spokesman Jonathan Hoffman. Can you also give the breakdown on the number of Thank you. Mr. Brady, you had said the, posit the <coughs> chances of a positive test are inevitable. Has Dodia looked at the risk that students may die by returning to school? If so, are students at increased risk of dying? Um, Look, Jeff, I, I think that everyone acknowledges that the uh, COVID is uh, as a uh, terrible and difficult disease that we're dealing with. Uh, we're putting in the best measures we possibly can to mitigate any risk. We, we acknowledge that there's risk. We're giving parents uh, and teachers the option if they uh, believe that that risk is uh, is uh, more than they're willing to, to take on, to seek out uh, alternatives uh, to being in class. Uh, as Mr. Brady talked about, we have uh, the virtual learning environment that's available to them as well. Um, and so that this is going to be something where we're working with communities, we're working with parents, we're working with teachers to reach uh, the solution that's best for them and to limit the risk as much as possible. 
a Navy spokesman referred us to the Dodea Pacific office for information on whether classes will be in person or virtual. And according to their calendar, school is scheduled to start on August 24th. And the Guam education administrators have been pushing out the press releases and announcements over the past 24 hours, announcing effective immediately no face-to-face -face learning. This comes as the governor's order to bring the island back to pandemic condition of readiness one for the next two weeks. This morning on the link, GDOE, GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez, Catholic School Superintendent Dr. Juan Flores and Harvard Christian Academy administrators zoomed in on closing campus doors and continuing operations with distance learning. GDOE school year is still set to begin on Monday, August 17th, with a two-week delay for in-class instruction. GDOE John Fernandez. As for Catholic schools and Harvest, their calendar year just began this past week with students welcomed back onto school grounds. Now the charter and private schools are preparing for an immediate shift, explains Zajicek. You can view the administrator's The Link interview in its entirety, streaming now on KUM's YouTube page. And prior to the governor's PCOR 1 announcement, Chamber Chairperson Christine Belletto appeared on KUM's The Link interactive show to lobby against a blanket shutdown in favor of a targeted approach. For those businesses um, and employees that have been diligently carrying out these safety protocols and it's working, you know, it's, it's, it's over precaution at the expense of you know, closures that have a long-term effect on our economy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, mm -hmm. we said from the beginning, public safety, public health is always going to be the first priority. But the governor addressed the issue in her news conference, saying while she appreciated the businesses that played by the rules, and we're in a war against the virus, she says, and targeted closures won't get it done. We need to just completely have one, uh, tar one uh, intense, um, attack on this virus and we need everyone, all our community members to be a uh, part of that uh, battle. And so having selective and targeted closing is slow. We need to act fast. Otherwise, this virus will take over our island. We really should be commending these businesses for their, um, you know, not only um, due diligence, but you know, for having that courage to shut down on their own and admit to the public, we've had an employee test positive. These are the precautions that we're taking. And out of an abundance of caution, we're just simply going to shut down, sanitize, and make sure that our employees are okay. And I wish everyone would be like that, but it's not the case. I have been uh, in restaurants, and I'm not going to say which ones are they, that, that they don't even put their mask on when they're not eating. I have been to a restaurant that had a bar and that whole bar was not wearing their mask. She says many of the recent rash of infections were traced back to bars and restaurants and that's why we're headed back to PCOR 1. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. And public health series of community testing sites launches tomorrow at the Jigo Gym. According to the Governor's Physicians Advisory Group member, Dr. Ho Wen, anyone who feels they may have been in contact with someone infected with the virus should go get tested. You don't need symptoms. No, you got to go there. You know, uh, this is why they put it out there because there's so much phone calls. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, a concern that I've been exposed or maybe my brother exposed to someone positive. So those, this, this thing right here is mean to try to catch everybody that concerned on the exposure yeah. the past week. Local clinics have been inundated with people concerned about exposure. Tomorrow's community testing in GIGO is from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. The next testing will be conducted on Saturday, August 22nd. August 22nd in Zonia at the St. Francis Church and School parking lot. The increase in COVID-19 cases has rock, rocked the island and as we gear up to lock down and transition back to a status of PCOR 1, a question remains. Where does that leave this year's primary election? Guam Election Commission Executive Director Maria Pangilinan spoke this morning on the radio. If Guam Election Commission is declared essential, we will continue to operate with limited or no public access, depending on what the executive order says. 
Pangilinan says that if the GEC is declared essential, voting will be done by scheduled appointments with the reopening of the government set for the day before the primary. She mentioned another challenge the GEC is facing is the UOCAVA ballots, which allows U.S. military and citizens residing overseas to register to vote. Pangilinan says that with the current schedule of August 29, the GEC only has five days to prepare the general election ballot to be sent to the military and overseas voters. If it's postponed, the U.S. Department of Justice and the Guam Election Commission are looking into how to keep the GEC compliant. According to a release from the Joint Information Center, in-person voting in the 2020 primary election shall proceed on August 29, subject to DPHSS guidance. Absentee voting conducted curbside shall continue by appointment. Voters should contact the Guam Election Commission with any increase. And the Department of Revenue and Taxation is preparing to roll out a mail-in option to renew driver's licenses. DRT Director Daphne Shimizu says these sort of renewals are the two highest traffic groups to their Baragata Heights offices. The mail-in options will definitely help ease congestion. We were able to, to, to put together a form and so that that way we can um, allow for a couple of things. One, a renewal of a driver's license, a non-real ID compliant driver's license, a conversion of an intermediate to full driver's license. And so those are two options that we're going to be um, temporarily allowing. Your advice to check out the DRT website for more information at guamtax.com. Meanwhile, DRT's driver's license branch is open tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. on a walk-in basis. The first hours for senior citizens, veterans, and persons with disabilities. And the first quarantine violent, uh, violation complaint was filed today by the Attorney General's office. According to a news release, Matthew Frederick Murphy was charged with violating quarantine orders after arriving on Guam from a high-risk area. AG Levin Camacho says, quote, our office is prepared to take criminal action against those who violate quarantine orders and when warnings and education efforts aren't enough. End quote. The AG says violation of an order to quarantine or isolate whether at a home or at a government site is a misdemeanor offense punishable by up to a year in prison or a fine of, of up to $1,000. And the Superior Court of Guam has denied a request by the owners of gaming machines to continue operating machines that are illegal under Guam law while their appeal is pending. Earlier this year, the court invalidated the gaming rules and regulations because they were submitted without public notice, public hearings, or an economic impact study as required by law. The court held that the gaming machine owners did not meet the requirement of showing they were likely to succeed on appeal or that they would suffer irreparable injury. It was unclear if the company applied for COVID-19 federal assistance after its decision, but if so, understood the risk when it applied for the federal relief programs. The owners of the gaming machines can now ask the Supreme Court of Guam to issue a say. And stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app. Available at the App Store now. Small businesses are an important foundation in our island's growing economy. They provide essential goods and services to our community while preserving local traditions and creating new job opportunities. Your responses to the 2020 Census of Guam will help small businesses receive the information they need to thrive for years to come. Respond today. Together, we can make a difference. We didn't set out to make a hit. Real bourbon, no apologies. Wild turkey. It'll find you. I was superintendent of education for many years, and he was president of the University of Guam for a decade. Together, we worked hard to extend opportunities from the youngest of our children to senior researchers at the University of Guam. We understood that public service 
and the economy begins with education and returns to it time and time again. But we're also partners in life, bringing together eight children of diverse backgrounds, 14 grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. I was born in Iloilo in the Philippines, and he was born in Tamuni, bringing together another combination of experiences which enrich our lives and our island home. When we say, si Zulus Maasi, and Marami Salamat Po, it is because we have been saying it all of our lives, not just during a campaign. I'm Robert Underwood, and I approve this message. KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. With the fate of President Donald Trump's executive order on $400 in unemployment aid still unclear, Governor Leon Guerrero says implementing its pay process is unlikely for the island. Is the 75% is going to come from FEMA, from the Disaster Relief Fund. But the way FEMA works is you have to front those monies first, and then you get reimbursed through FEMA. And if we're going to front this money plus the 25%, it's going to cost our government $250, uh, $240 million. So we don't have that in the CARES Act, and we don't have that in the general fund. She went on to say that there still is some relief through PUA as U.S. Congress negotiates for weeks on providing more aid. And an update on revenue and taxation and from the Department of Administration will be mailing out, out 1,304 tax refund checks this week. The checks totaling a little over $3.9 million. These checks include refunds that were garnished to repay GovGuam debts. They are forever free returns filed on or before February 5th, 2020. And due to the recent uptick in positive COVID cases, federal drug defendant Mark Mayo's trial was pushed back two weeks. Mayo was arrested in November of last year during a drug raid in Astumbo. He faces conspiracy to distribute meth and attempted possession of meth with intent to distribute charges. Additionally, due to the pandemic, the trial will occur at the Guam Army National Guard Readiness Center, a larger venue that allows for proper social distancing. Jury selection was changed to August 24th. And trial had previously been scheduled to occur this month for John Boom Matanonia federal case. However, a sealed motion has set this court has set his next court appearance for three months from now. Boom is accused of intimidating jurors to vote not guilty in the federal drug trial, Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser. He was indicted on obstructing justice by endeavoring to influence a juror and conspiracy to distribute meth charges. On August 10th, the United States filed a motion to seal certain documents, including the motion to seal a document. The defense did not object the motion. A court order granted the motion in part, only allowing the motion and any document referenced within to be filed under seal. According to Judge Michael Berdalio's order, the documents state, the court finds that the sealing of said document serves a compelling argument interest as noted in the documents that in absence of closure, there is a substantial probability this compelling interest would be harmed and there are no alternatives to sealing the documents that would adequately protect the compelling interest. A status hearing has been set for November 13th. And in regional news earlier today, the CNMI recorded one more confirmed case of COVID-19, bringing its total case count to 50 as of March, since March. As of, as of press time, the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation's public information officer, Lee Tenorio, told KUAM that Quote, the individual was identified through a mandatory pre-operation screening for a scheduled surgery operation at the CHCC hospital and not identified through the community-based testing initiative nor travel screening, end quote. In a social media post, the hospital wrote that the individual has been moved to the designated isolation area for close monitoring as contact tracing begins. They are investigating if this is a case of community spread on Saipan for the first time in months. Stick around for more on Primetime News. You're watching KUAM.
your community calendar. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. Our biggest SUV, the Palisade, and our smallest SUV, the Venue. Remember, it's not the size of the dog in your adventure, but the size of the adventure in your dog. Big or small, it's better in a Hyundai SUV. Social distancing may be the new norm, but connection will always be our tradition. Through good times and tough times, we remain connected with you. Mass may be the new fashion, but protection will always be our style. You can always count on us to protect the things that matter the most. Sanitizing may be the new routine, but caring will always be our practice. We care about your loved ones and the things you value the most. And as we welcome our new normal, one thing remains certain. We will always be here for you. We're open and ready to serve you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Welcome back. This morning on The Link, Bring Chris spoke with Roman De La Cruz about a cultural reburial ceremony and the ancient art of slinging. You know what I was thinking this morning when I woke up, I was like, I bet Roman is going to take us outside <laughs> on the Zoom uh, call. And lo and behold, uh, here we are. Rome, good morning. Hey, Abde, good morning. Hey, Huff. Where are you at? I am at the Saugan Katoran Chamoru, uh, the new uh, additional headquarters for the slinging group Atsu Marianas. Right. And so you guys have got an event, right, tonight? Or today? Well, actually, we have a gathering this morning. There is mm -hmm. a, uh, yeah. there is a, there are reburials that were unearthed in Saipan uh, several decades ago, and there's going to be a reburial ceremony there at eight o'clock, uh, eight thirty this morning for the uh, ancient village of Aliao. So, uh, you know, I mean, of course, respect for our ancestors and for another uh, step towards uh, Mariana Island solidarity. We're joining our uh, chat loose in uh, in Saipan in the morning, and also uh, making way to uh, uh, prepare for another mass funeral or mass reburial in Saipan next week on uh, on Friday. Mm -hmm. But now with this COVID situation going on right now, of course we want to be uh, socially responsible. Uh, very mindful, very careful of this COVID. So after today's uh, meeting, understanding that our island might be in uh, key core one, we have to readjust plans and, and figure out how we can still join in this uh, memorial service uh, with our Chalus in Saipan uh, mm -hmm. and the CNMI, mm -hmm. the rest of the CNMI, how we can join them next year, just to let them know that uh, everybody's feeling, you know, help them to under, or just help everybody understand that everybody's feeling the loss of these 780 and looking for the justice for these 780 mm -hmm. uh, reburial scheduled for next week. Okay. And this is from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. this morning again, second contour in Chamorro. Um, how many people uh, are you expecting? You said the ceremony is at 8, and you could tell me, uh, walk us through this, the ceremony that's planned. Well, the ceremony that's going on right now is that they're, the reburials are actually scheduled in Saipan, mm -hmm. and we're going to be following their lead. Uh, the, the reburials leave there at around um, at uh, 8.30 this morning, but you know how, uh, because everybody is not always on time, uh, <laughs> we deliberately... At, uh, Rome, we, you can have your more so, standard time. It's allowed at the, you know, uh, SKC, it's allowed. <laughs> it's encouraged, yeah, mandatory. Can you imagine how that is at a cultural center? So how do you say 8.30 in tomorrow? 10.30. <laughs> yeah, 6 o'clock. Right. You know what I mean? But, uh, 
<laughs> That's but, why this says 6 a.m. <laughs> That's why you put 6 a.m., yeah, right? <laughs> I think it's a good opportunity since we're on here on a cultural mission. It's going to help everybody kind of uh, get a scope of not just what we're aiming to do here with slinging, but also right. with the other cultural organizations that have been here way longer than we have. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of great, great uh, people up there. Around. Let's uh, talk about the uh, slinging, how much uh, slinging is going to go on uh, this morning. And I see you got your targets set up there. Well, I think right now these targets are actually engineered right now. So everything that we've been doing in the, through the past several years has been kind of to recruit and start an army of slingers. But right now what we've decided to engineer is because our mission isn't just activating slinging. Our, our mission is also... Uh, part of it is also the proficiency in slinging. So where, uh, like how Guelu put it best, where everywhere, everywhere else was a recruiting center, we want this to be our training ground for the special forces of slinging. Snipers, and, right. Uh, so the thing is, is right now there are a lot of other elements that are involved with uh, with slinging. I mean, of course, slinging being a, uh, in a sense, a martial art, a form of defense. It's a sport. It's a game. Right. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's not everything. So right now we're just really trying to educate ourselves into uh, – other stone games and other forms of competition that were have been that have been available within ancient Chamorro times. Maybe welcome other new Pacific games that are in here, and then just bound and gel with all these other facets of culture. You know, uh, mm -hmm. that can just dial everything in. Aiming, of course, uh, towards uh, towards and beyond the 500 year anniversary, nice. which we will be commemorating next year in 2021. For the full interview, head over to our YouTube page and coming up, our Cold Stone Creamery birthday shoutouts. When you want to make the most of your time, waiting in line should be last on your mind. Introducing Skip Lino, the most convenient way to visit Docomo Pacific. Simply download the Skip Lino app on your device, set your region to Guam or Northern Mariana Islands, find Docomo Pacific, and select the location you'd like to visit. Spend less time in line and more time with the people who matter most with the Skip Lino app. Can't wait to see you soon. Docomo Pacific, better together. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Coat Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Your island weekend starting, so we say happy birthday to Cassandra Rangelby. Happy birthday to my girl Cassandra. I love you with all my heart, your one and only boyfriend. Christian Corpus, aka Tintin. May you have a wonderful and safe happy birthday. And they wrote it just like that. Awesome. Happy birthday, Tintin, Tin, from Daddy James and the family. We love you so much. Hugs and love. Enjoy your day, son, they say. Joe St. Nicholas Titano. Happy birthday to a legendary coach. Thank you for your continued support on running adventures from your Koku family. Anya St. Nicholas. Happy birthday to KUN Kids alumni. Anya St. Nicholas, who turns 14 today. Love your dad, Ryan, and family. And of course, happy birthday from your KUM familia. And happy birthday number 4-5 to Craig Camacho from your work family. Happy birthday, Craig. And a single happy belated birthday wish going out to Seth Anthony Ariola, born on the 13th. Seth, your friends and family are wishing you the very best. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo, your name, and your birth date. And it's that time of the week where we announce the winner of a yummy Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Cake. This week's ice cream cake winner is Christian Corpus. Nicknamed Tintin, and that is awesome. Christian was born on August the 14th, 